of history of hackers, I'm saying how hackers change everything. Because, you know, I'm, I've been brought up with hacker gangs like uh, Methods of Doom and Legion of Doom and uh, Masters of Deception. And they were hacking in a certain way, right? Um, we don't really talk about the ways that they hacked, um, but they hacked in a certain way. And I was looking through the different ways that they hacked in the 1980s. For example, by looking into uh, the Frack magazine or looking through text files and, and, uh, and different documents that I found online and just analyzing the different methods that they were using when they were hacking. And some of the methods that they were using when they were hacking was simply brute forcing attacks, uh, password attacks. Um, we Even at that, in the 1980s, we had default usernames and default passwords. And uh, we also did something called war dialing, which is basically port scanning, but you were looking for phone numbers instead over a modem. Um, you were going through garbage to find uh, printed papers with usernames and passwords and configuration files and so on. And you know, all these different hacking techniques were, were cool, but what did they actually hack in the 1980s? But was there something to hack? There was a lot of mainframes. There was a lot of critical infrastructures, and even uh, you know uh, um, devices with a T. Would, but it was basically modem connected devices. And here you can see a small screenshot of one of these text files that I found, where they have a username and password, a simple just you know a, a, a list of default usernames and passwords, uh, which was very easy to use back in the day. And have a quick look at, at that picture and remember it. Then we were opening Pandora's box in the 1990s because we got the internet, which actually messed up everything because suddenly uh, we didn't just have mainframes, we have a lot of devices being connected to the internet being available for everyone who had an internet connection. And you could communicate over borders, country borders. So easy, you can start hacking stuff from Sweden, you can hack stuff in, in America or whatever. And when I went back and looked at those different files, I saw that brute force attacks were the same. Default usernames and passwords were the same. Uh, backdoors was, was also being used. And then you had two new ones. You have password cracking, which not really used in the 1980s that much. Then you have stack overflows and command injection vulnerabilities. But OK, that was something new that we didn't see before. But if you look at the targets in the 1990s, there's just some minor differences. You still had the mainframes, you had the critical infrastructure, but you also have IoT devices, which is not that different from modem connected devices. But you had individual computers and you had internet services. That was like the big change where individual computers got hacked, individual computers got viruses and so on. Then we fast forward to the year 2000. You know, this is where basically the year of the cyber criminal. But if you analyze the different techniques that's being used by cyber criminals and hackers, you still have brute force, you still have the weak passwords, you still have the backdoors in, uh, in uh, software and hardware, but you also have reuse passwords, software vulnerabilities, supply chain attacks, and a lot of more like different kind of attacks that you didn't really see in the 1980s um, used by hackers. Um, but what are we actually seeing being hacked today, right? If we compare it to the 1980s, it's still critical infrastructure, right? We have IoT devices, which is a modem connected device. So it's still like these small devices. Um, you have the individual computers, you have internet servers, and then you have mobile devices, right? That's the biggest difference between the 1980s and 2000s. And remember the screenshot that I showed you in the beginning. Here's another screenshot of a modern attack. And let's fast forward. Let's. There's one more. Um, one more screen. Yes, you can see that it still has the default usernames and default passwords. And this is from the Mirai botnet. And some of the usernames and some of the password combinations is exactly the same as we've seen since the 1980s. So the Mirai botnet and different IoT botnets are exploiting the same, same techniques, even with the same usernames and passwords in the 19, since the 1980s. So what have happened? Like, what have the hackers actually changed uh, from a historical point of view? What is the current situation? Hackers are now considered as heroes, basically. I mean, we have all these different people who are working as professional security consultants. You have security conferences like the one that we have now. You also have bug bounty programs where companies are offering hackers money to find vulnerabilities. Hackers are heroes. 
And the, maybe the most important thing is like, when I grew up, uh, hackers were nerds. We didn't get the girls. Now we get all the girls because we're rock stars, right? Um, so basically, that is what what's changed for the in, in thirty years that we got all the girls. And uh, yep, that's it. That's twenty by twenty. <laughs>